We start with what I hope you will agree is a somewhat interesting hook um, that you know perhaps that when you look at the letter R in a mirror it gets flipped backwards. But why is there a right-left inversion and not a top-bottom inversion or both right-left and top-bottom? Um, if you are thinking that maybe it's because your head has this bicameral symmetry, um, that's probably not the correct word, but down the middle of your nose it's kind of symmetric, that if you lay on your side and looked in a mirror, would that get you a top-bottom inversion? And I hope you know it would not. So I would like you very seriously to wrestle with uh, this, this issue. And there's a kind of a trick answer that you can see if you can figure out, or maybe you know it already from somebody else or some other experience you've had. Um, okay, now I want to deal with uh, plane mirrors. And uh, here is what we call an object, the thing that you are looking at. And then in the mirror, you will see an image. Let me write those words in case my pronunciation is not good. The object is the thing that the light is coming from, and the image is what, what you see in the mirror, um, where the light appears to be coming from, whereas the object is where the light is actually coming from. So here is this, this thing, and light bounces off of this in all directions, including straight to your eye. So if you were to um, look at this, uh, you, would, you would be able to see it from here and here. But when you look in the mirror, you also see it, and it seems to be inside the mirror. And that's because the, the light uh, coming off of this in all directions has two particular rays which bounce back to your eye when it's in that position and bounce back to your eye when it's in that position. And these could be two eyes sitting on your head with a nose in the middle. Um, that uh, the reflections, of course, are, are going to have the angle of reflection be equal to the angle of incidence in both cases. And then comes the very important thing. And that is that your brain is firmly convinced that where it sees light coming from is where light comes from and that light travels in straight lines. So your brain sees the light coming to it from here and it says that's where the light's coming from. Indeed, that is where the light's coming from. But your brain is not into reflections and your brain is convinced that light does not change its direction but travels in a straight line. And here again, your brain is not up to the idea of reflections. It is convinced that light travels in straight lines. It learned it when it was a baby. And, and so if you extend these two lines of sight back, you come to a place that your brain is convinced the light is coming from without bending in straight lines. And so that is the place where your brain sees the image. And it is behind the mirror. It is perpendicularly behind the mirror. It is exactly as far behind the mirror along this perpendicular as the object is in front of the mirror. And we'll do a little lab experience and you will, you will be able to see that that is indeed the case. Uh, or at least as, go, as labs go, it'll come out close. Um, now I want to deal with curved mirrors. And this is sort of is supposed to represent a dish um, that uh, I have some very nice ones to show you in class. And, 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 but, but a mirror is a three-dimensional object. It has this kind of scooped out but, but scooped out in, in, in all dimensions. Um, if we were to treat this like a wheel, then it would have an axis. The 
this is a bunch of vocabulary. This is the axis of the mirror. And, and uh, we can talk about things that are on the axis and off the axis. We will mainly steal, deal with on the axis uh, issues here. This is called the principal axis, but axis is good enough. Now, in our diagrams, we are going to take this, this three-dimensional object and represent it with a two-dimensional arc. So this would be the reflecting surface, this arc here. But we need to realize that it goes off in three dimensions. And let me go ahead and get rid of that for fear it distracts us. So this would be the mirrored surface. But we need to think about it being three-dimensional. The point where the mirror crosses through the axis is called the vertex. And when we do our mirror work, our optics work, we are going to do what is called a thin mirror approximation. And we will do our drawings as if the reflections do not happen at the surface of the mirror, but back here on this plane which passes through the vertex. The amount of light that the mirror captures and reflects back is known as the aperture. Come on. Sorry, having trouble. See, I can't get a hold of this stuff. There we go. So how big a cross the mirror is, is its aperture. Um, that, that when we deal with lenses, how big a piece of glass is collecting light is the aperture of the lens or a camera. Um, that, that how much light does it capture uh, is the aperture. Now, along the axis, there is a point known as the center of curvature. And I'm going to get into trouble, but we'll go with it. The center of curvature, usually represented with a C. And this point would be the center of this sphere of which we have a section of it making up the lens. Halfway between the center of curvature and the vertex, and that's very important to remember that, it is halfway to the center of curvature, you have a point known as the focus or the focal point. And the focus is the place where rays coming in parallel to the axis are reflected. We will say that again later, but the focus is defined as the place where the light comes together. The, all distances are measured from the vertex. So the radius of curvature would be from the vertex to the center of curvature. And the distance from the vertex to the focus is known as the focal length. And there you are. I did get into trouble. There's the focus. And the center of curvature is twice the focus away from the vertex. So this is the focal length, the distance from the vertex, all distances from the vertex. In this case, the distance to the focus from the vertex. Finally, we have a thing that is going to be reflected in the mirror. And we will represent it with an arrow, but it could be a tree or a person or a dog, anything that the light is coming off of. But an arrow is a very nice simplification. We always, it's called the object. And as we already said, this is the thing that the light is coming off of. And then it's going to hit the mirror and reflect. We always put the base of the object on the axis. And then we have a, a it has an orientation. We put its, its head up here. And so the distance from the vertex to the object, that would be called the object distance. 
all distances measured from the vertex. Okay, so here we here's the picture again, and here's all that language, or much of that language. We left off aperture. Two rules which guide you in all of these optics diagrams that you will make for mirrors. The first one we already mentioned. Oops, no, the second one we already mentioned. The first is a ray that goes through the center of curvature. So here you go. That No, don't be together. And now you are together, aren't you? There we go. All right. So here's a ray which goes from the tip. And we will be taking light rays that go from the tip of the object. There would be rays leaving all the other points on the object, but they are going to move in a manner that is parallel to these rays from the tip. So we always take a ray from the tip. And of course, rays are leaving the tip in all direction. But I take that particular ray, which goes through the center of curvature. And it comes down here in some place out of our viewing. Um, it hits the curved surface of the mirror. Well, what is the angle of incidence? And a line which goes from the center out to the edge of a circle is called a radius. And it hits the edge of the circle exactly along a normal. So the angle of incidence for this ray is 0. And thus, the angle of reflection will be 0. And, and the, the reflection that comes back will be exactly along the same line and it will go back through the tip. So there's your first rule. A ray through the center of curvature is reflected back through the center of curvature. It's not as useful as this one. That rays which come in parallel to the axis. Here we go. There is a ray leaving the tip of the object traveling parallel to the axis. Notice I have extended this ray past this curve all the way to the straight line. That is our thin mirror approximation, and you need to be careful to do that right. You get sloppy with that, Mr. Houghton gets sloppy with your grades. The reflection of a ray going parallel to the axis is going to be through the focus. And then it says vice versa. A ray parallel goes through the focus, so a ray from the from the tip of this object going through the focus would of course reflect parallel. And we have an awkwardness in that these three, the pink ones, the three reflected rays are not coming through a single point that typically we should not do this one. I'll get rid of it. That, that the one through the center of curvature, you can do it, but I think it, it is better used as a check. That better is to do parallel through the focus, through the focus parallel, and then we get this unambiguous result. That's where the rays come together, and so that, when you look with your eye at this thing, that's where the light seems to be coming from. And so that will be the place where you see an image. Object where the light rays are coming from, image where they appear to be coming from. And I'll go ahead and draw an image in, in, in red. So you get an image. Its base is going to be on the axis, just like the object's base was on the axis. And its tip will be where those rays from the tip seem to come together. And you could look casually at this and say, oh yeah, through the center of curvature, that's close-ish to that. So I feel good about that answer. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, the it, it fails us, and it's probably because we're doing this thin 
a mirror approximation. If we weren't, maybe we would. This ray here would come out going through that point as well. Um, go ahead if you want, and and and. Uh, oops. Yeah, I'm not going to get there. I was going to get rid of this one, and this one, and then you could do through the center of curvature reflects back through the center of curvature. I'd like to get rid of them. There, I got rid of that one. There, I got rid of that one. Good for you, Mr. Houghton. You're getting rid of all of them. So just doing two, the the one which goes through the the uh, center of curvature and reflects back through the center of curvature and parallel through the focus, then it would be unambiguous, and you would know that the image was over here. Oh, not going to be nice to me. Okay, and I would need to make it a little bit longer, but but that would be a perfectly correct drawing. Um, it's just that if you do three of them, then you get up with this ambiguous result and you don't know what to do. These two rules, we are going to start applying them right now. But before we start applying them, I would like to point out that what I did was parallel through the focus and through the focus parallel to locate that image but all these other light rays are also coming off the tip of the object. These ones here don't even hit the mirror, so I have no idea what they do. But these three gray rays hit the mirror. Notice I extended it back to that thin mirror approximation. I don't know what they're going to do when they hit the mirror. That's why I stick with these two, parallel through the focus and through the focus parallel, because they are well defined. But what I do know is all those others will also come together at the same point. When you take your eye, oh, why are you doing that? When you take your eye and you look here, you see light coming to you there. If you look here, you see light coming to you. You look here, you see light coming. You look here, you see light coming. Everywhere you look, the light is coming to you, and it seems to be coming from that point. And so that is where the image is. That's where you see the light coming from, even though it's really coming from here. OK, so we just did this diagram but the object was outside the center of curvature. And you saw the result that, that you get an image that is going to be inside the center of curvature and smaller. When we move the image inside the center of curvature, where would the object be now? And, and I would like you to do that, I remind you if you need it. If you don't need any reminders, then stop the show and do it without my help. But if you want help, then this is what you're going to do. You take a ray going from the tip of the object and you extend it parallel to the axis all the way to that vertical line and then it reflects through the focus. And then you take a ray which goes from the tip of the uh, object through the focus go all the way to this vertical line and then it reflects parallel and you look at where those two lines cross and you draw an arrow whose base is on the axis and whose head is where the lines cross and you should get a result that the image is outside of the focus and it ought to be upside down up outside of the center of curvature and it ought to be upside down and this time, it ought to be bigger than this object. If you have a shaky hand and you can't draw straight lines, then take the edge of a piece of paper or a piece of plastic or something to help you with drawing your straight lines. But if you're going to wander all over the place, it's not going to make a pleasing drawing and not going to please Mr. Houghton. Um, the next image that you want to do is this one. So we started with the object outside the focus 
and then we moved it in uh, outside the central curvature then we moved it inside the central curvature and now we're going to move it inside of the um, focus and that makes things go very bizarre this is the one you should definitely expect to see on your test because it's the hard one um, I'm going to look ahead to see if yeah I, I you know what I bet oh yeah it was right here I didn't drag some stuff okay we needed to uh, also get this vocabulary that an image that is formed by light rays coming together. They really did come together here. It's called a real image. It is upside down. We say it is inverted. All real images will be inverted. And then the third adjective that we apply to this uh, image is that it's got a magnification less than one, or we say it has been diminished. It made smaller than the object. Okay, glad we got that. And then this one made an image, you've already done this, made an image that was real. Light rays came together. It is inverted, that's true of all real images. And it was enlarged. It had a magnification greater than one. Now for this one. And I would suggest we do it together. If you are full of yourself, then go ahead and see if you can do this. But if not, why don't you do it with us? We're going to do what we always do. We're going to take rays going from the tip of the object, one of which we will take. We'll be going parallel to the axis, and we know very well how it will reflect. It, oh, this is so frustrating it will reflect through the focus and that doesn't look very through the focus but we'll do this so tricky you got it to go through the focus then comes a ray which goes through the focus and the problem is a ray which goes through the focus never hits the mirror and so it never gets reflected so what do we do with that, Mr. Houghton? What we instead do is take a ray which has gone through the focus and then grazes the tip of the arrow. This is a ray which has passed through the focus. It is a ray from the tip of the arrow which is in the direction of through the focus. And we know that a ray which goes through the focus gets reflected parallel. Hurrah! We've done it! Or maybe not! So I would strongly encourage you to put these arrows to indicate, you know, here is the light, it went to the mirror, and now that's what it's doing when it reflects. And it went to the mirror, and now that's what it's doing when it reflects because you look at those two reflections and you say hmm where are they gonna cross and the answer is they are never going to cross but I need to go back and get an eye let's get an eye your brain is of the opinion that where it sees light coming from is where the light came from and that light travels in straight lines so your brain seeing this light coming off the mirror is convinced it came from someplace along that straight line and what we need to do is to extend uh oh got too much stuff you go away okay extend that straight line back and then consider the view from here again your brain feeling like the light travels in straight lines would <laughs> you're not frustrating are you diagram you go away oh everybody
everybody going away. How nice. Yeah, I'm not frustrated. There we go. Okay. So your brain, again, thinking light travels in a straight line. And there is the point where the two reflected rays, they don't intersect, but they seem to have intersected. And that is the place where in your brain you see an image. Just like with the plane mirror, it is behind the mirror. And if you go back there and look, there's nothing there. It only exists inside of your brain. But that's where the light seems to be coming from, so your brain is firmly convinced that that's where the thing is, even though this is really where the thing is. And if you think that's silly talk, you wait till I show you what I got to show you, because it below your mind. Um, while we're on it, let's take that third possibility, which is a ray. Mm -mm. This is so irritating. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not irritating. Mr. Horton going to start saying bad words. Where were we? There's where we were. Okay. Now let's try again. And there, a ray through the center of curvature will, of course, reflect back through the center of curvature. But your eye in particular your brain, seeing that light coming from there, says, oh, that light came from back along this straight line. And again, you get these three possible points of intersection, but this is a much better agreement than we got before. And this usually works out very well, that they come out almost the same. But I would not do that third one because you could potentially lead yourself to confusion. Do I put the image here? Do I put the image here? Or do I put the image there? And the answer is yes. All right. This is a different mirror. This mirror has the curve in the opposite direction. Go back. See these were curved towards the side where I was putting my object. But this mirror is curved away from the side where I was putting my object. This is called a convex mirror or a diverging mirror. This mirror is a concave mirror. Here we we'll go up here. Because you see there's a little place for the bear to get out of the rain. So it's a cave. Concave mirror. Um, this is a converging mirror. It usually, when you do it in this kind of arrangement, it brings light together. It didn't manage to bring light together when you went inside the focus. But outside the focus, it did bring light together. This mirror here will never bring light together. It is a diverging mirror. How do you do it? Just the same way you've done all the others. You draw here. I'll do it, but you try to turn off the show as soon as you feel confident you could take over. Um, a ray coming in parallel to the axis would reflect through the focus. But this is a mirror. You can't go through a mirror. So what it's going to do is reflect through the focus. Well, that will be as if it had been through the focus. Mr. Oh, you should get a straight edge. And a ray which goes through the focus. Come on, be nice. Of course, it won't make it to the focus because the focus is behind the mirror. But it's headed to the focus, and that one will reflect parallel to the axis you see that these two rays are diverging. This mirror will always cause the rays to diverge. 
Boy, your brain says light travels in a straight line, much straighter than that. And so it traces this line backwards, and it traces this line backwards. Be careful, don't look at this one. And so right at that spot, red again, right at this spot we've got the tip of the arrow, and there would be your image. Here was your object. Again, as I, I think we failed to say that, but we'll say it now, I bet. Yes, that what you have is a virtual image. Light did not come together. It only appeared to come from that spot, and so it is virtual. It is real if the light comes together. This one is diminished. It is possible to have virtual images that are enlarged. In fact, I hope that's what you found to be the case in the previous uh, exercise. That, that uh, oh, I guess we're not supposed to look at this down here yet. Um, all virtual images are right side up. Some are enlarged, some are diminished. You, you cannot predict that. Um, okay, then then you have this little exercise with the fact that in the passenger side mirror it says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. And that's because they have been diminished. The car following you, here's the car that's following you, but you look at it in the mirror and you see a little car. And we judge little cars to be far away cars. Hence this warning. So why? Why, if, if it's going to make you make bad judgments, you will think, oh, it's safe for me to get over there when the car is right up on you. Um, why, why would we use such a mirror on the passenger side? And I hope I asked you about that on your worksheet. Oops. Boom. Next, um, we're going to get mathematical. We have just been doing all these exercise with diagrams to find out where the image is and how big the image is, but we are going to get much more precise now. Uh, we are going to develop what's known as the lens formula. And we could probably take the time, and I might be impressed with myself if I did, but it's all geometry, and out of it comes the fact that the reciprocal of the focal length is equal to the reciprocal of the object distance plus the reciprocal of the image distance. And this is a formula that you will use again and again. And it has this nice mnemonic. Uh, if I do, I die. So this goes for optics and drugs. Um, also, we have a mathematical formula for magnification. And obviously, magnification has to do with how much bigger the image is than the object. If you have doubled the size of the object, you have a magnification of two. Um, but it turns out that the ratio of those heights is the same as the ratio of these distances. So you have hi ho, di do, it's off to magnification we go. Oops, we lost that. There we go. Uh, which, if you don't recognize it, is a parody on the Dwarves song in Snow White. And if you've never watched Snow White, then you need to get it and watch it, and you will be a better person. Um, more details. Whenever you get a negative distance, that could be a negative focal length, or it could be a negative image distance, doesn't make sense to have a negative object distance. That will never be negative. But this one or this one could be negative. And what negative means is that it's in the wrong place. And in the case of mirrors, the way a mirror works, you're supposed to put things in front of the mirror. And the light is supposed to come together in front of the mirror. So behind the mirror, over on this side, is negative distances. And if the focal point is behind the mirror, then that's a negative focal length. 
this in this case here's the the object and here's the image out here in front and so that distance from the vertex always from the vertex out to here would be the image distance and it would be positive if you have to measure distance from the vertex to behind the mirror that will be a negative distance and if you do this equation and you get a negative image distance then you know that you have a virtual image um, and while we're about it let me point out to you that if the focal length is negative boom boom then the image must always be at a negative distance if this side of the equation is negative this side of the equation has to be negative and the object distance is always positive so this has to be negative so we know that diverging mirrors um, convex mirrors always make virtual images later on we're going to study lenses and the lens instead of reflecting light off of it bends the light as it goes through the lens and so the right place for things to happen on a lens is over on the other side from the object if, if this is where you're looking at it from I would say in front of the lens and the object will always be behind the lens unlike with mirrors and and this would be a positive distance but this would also be a positive distance to the object if and it will happen you to the image if you get an image on the same side of the lens as the object what I would call behind the lens that is a negative distance to there see if you can remember that until we get to that issue and here is a chance for you to plug and chug you take this data and and use these equations and and uh, and it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to try to memorize those equations instead of having to look at them um, that uh, you find out which one of these is the right answer and that's the end of the show